hello guys welcome welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to show you a demonstration of how we can use spring boot and jsp together to create a simple login page and this is going to be a detailed video it's not going to be uh, like writing down the code see a working functionality i will be explaining while writing down the code like why we are using it and what's and what's the alternative and how can we improve it like that so this is going to be a simple basic video where we will not see much ui uh, you can say good ui but you will see good backend so that is what i'm doing here and i hope you can get the understanding or you will learn something from it so if you are new new to this channel uh, if you are new to this channel sorry for the fumble uh please hit the subscribe button i need um, your mo like i need your help with the motivation to continue on my journey so that will be really helpful and uh and yeah let's kick start this video so um, you need eclipse id or intelligent whatever you are using but you need java installed on your system and uh, and yeah few uh, i think basic understanding of spring boot and maven and i think that's all because jsp uh, i'm not going much deep into it right now it's going to be basic so what you need to do is you need to go to this url spring initializer right so here what you need to do is you, you need to provide all kind of dependencies or type of project that you want to create so i will just do a uh, com dot example sounds good to me and here i will do is spring gsp and let's say demo so that's what we need and a uh, few dependencies that i want to add like web spring web we need right so um, i need spring boot Yep, I think this will suffice. Spring Web, and I need a uh, one uh, dev tools because um, yeah, you can see the description here why we are using it. So it provides um, web dependencies to us to create web application, and this one provides restarts, live reload, and configuration. So that's why uh, you can use actuator also, but I don't think we are going to use it and i will choose java 8 here i don't have java 11 installed on my system so so yeah i think that's all we need so let's generate if you see any dependency missing in this project you can always go to bomb.xml and try to uh, add the dependency to it that will do the work so let's extract this and sorry about this uh, i'm a free user so i like to wait for five seconds <laughs> so let's continue and register and yeah it's extracted so let's import this project so go to file import existing maven projects next browse the project go to downloads spring gsp demo that's ours select it and click on finish so it will take some time uh, to create the folder structure and directory things like that right so let's quickly go to pom.xml to see if we have it all so we have spring boot starter web we have spring boot dev tools but there is one thing missing we don't have json uh, not JSON, JSP, um, because like we we want to read JSP and no, I I don't think we need that. I think we just need Tomcat to be embedded. So let's add one dependency. So let's go to Google and let's do Apache Tomcat embed MVN. So we will try to hit MVN repository and let's see core I we need Jasper 
so um, you should always try to um, download the one which has the most users because uh, if you see the new ones no one is using it and you will not find solutions out there if you uh, face any issue right so we are going to use um, not like this but I will use one way so I'll just copy this and I'll do this format and I'll do provide it okay so let's see um so I made a stupid mistake here we need scope as provided that should work it's building yep so it's working now so we have all the dependencies now tomcat embed jasper it's basically for our gsp as view right so that's why we are using it and i think we are all good with the dependencies so now if you see we have our main method here so what we need is we need a simple uh, annotation needed and I'll tell you why so we want our application to be running so if, if you have worked on spring MVC it, it will be more clear uh, for you guys to relate so the point is that our project is working on a class path or you can say a certain location so what this spring boot needs to know is that from where do we find the code logic or you can say the controller where will we where will we find those so to find those we need to provide the package so it's like a class path or you can say uh, a package thingy from where we can get through the logic so that's that is where spring boot is going to look at and through that it is going to uh, execute your logic right so there is an annotation component component scan in spring mvc we used to do this using um, the annotation not annotations we used to do it through annotations also but we used to do it through xml files and there was a tag there through which we used to do it now we don't we have this annotation and through that we can achieve it so we can just copy this because I'm going to use this package as a parent right and save it that's it so once you do that what will happen is you got the um, you got the basic created that means that you or uh, not you spring boot knows now where to look at to the code now we need to create a controller package that's where our logic lies so you can directly create a package or you can create a class and here you can mention dot controller and here let's do login controller right so hit finish so this is a controller so we need a notation controller here right so now what we need is we need request mapping here so we will go st step by step so let's do request mapping so I want my code uh, to be working on a specific request like right so this request mapping is going to work only on a specific URI so what I will do is I will write down value sorry about that value equals here I will do login because I want this request mapping to be hit when we hit URI login and I will do method equals to request method dot get right so this method is going to return a view so that's why it will be string 
and we'll do login page right so it will return a string with the name of the gsp page now we forgot one thing to do we forgot to update application dot properties so why is it important now um, let's see this line of code it says that it has to return a view or a page right so page is uh, a static page for us guys who are viewing it but it has to be dynamic and that's why we are using JSP right so what Spring Boot needs to uh, know is that this is a view or this is a type of view and here are your views so we need to provide the location and the type of view that Spring Boot is going to recall or like refer to so first we need to create few folders so in, in source main we need to create folder structure like so first folder will be web app and it's uh, really old like if you have worked on spring mvc you can easily relate to it so web app web inf and then there is this folder jsp so inside jsp i am going to create jsp folders right uh, not JSP folders, JSP files. Now, in application dot properties, what we need to do is, we need to provide two things: the type of the view and the location. So let's do this. So there, there is two. Uh, there are two properties which we have to use. So first is that we have to provide the JSP, uh, not JSP, the view uh, format. So we will do mvc dot view dot oh sorry we first have to provide the location so we will do web inf and then jsp right and the second one is spring dot mvc dot view dot suffix So now it knows that in this folder we have our views and this is the format or type of the view. So now what is left is that we just have to create views. So do file and let's do first login.jsp. Right? So <coughs> So here are two things that you can do. You can um, obviously be, uh, you can be creative here and do uh, Bootstrap or any other framework who is really good for front end, or you can directly use HTML code to uh, do the necessary stuff. So which I'm going to do here. So I'll do head and I'll do title. So I'll just do login page here and then we need body then we need two input boxes right so I'll do input so first one will be user ID so it will be type text and name equals to user ID and then placeholder equals user id and that's all for this one the second input is going to be so br is just like break uh, because i don't want both these input to be on the same line that's why so here i will do password and this is how you won't be able to see the password you will see star in place of characters and here i will do simply password placeholder equals to password and lastly we need a submit button so you can just do input type equals to submit or you can do button 
and do it submit two ways are there right so this has been done now what we need is we need all of this to be in a form because this form will get submitted and that's how it is going to hit our another URI or uh, another request mapping so let's do that uh, formatting got weird okay so we will come back to form later so let's run this and see how it is looking so let's go back to spring gsp run as java application okay good enough started let's try to hit the url uh, localhost 8080 slash login great so we see user id we see password right so now what we need to do is we when we click on submit it needs to verify whether these two users are actually valid or not so two things we can do here we can create a database also and through that we can verify but um, this is going to be a basic um, video so I will just verify using if and else conditions and if the uh, the credentials matches with my if else uh, static values constants then I will let the users uh, log in right so there will be one welcome page so let's create a welcome page so let's do welcome dot jsp right so here let's do h2 uh, sorry first we need to do it. so we don't need uh, to do complete html but it's always good to do that head uh, title and let's do welcome to uh, let's just say welcome and here inside body let's do h2 and welcome to the site okay so let's jump back to our controller so what we need is here we again need another request mapping which will come from our login.jsp so how is it going to come from login.jsp first we need to understand that so so when when we submit a form it has to respond back saying that some user has submitted some details so let's so it comes back to back end uh, to do some kind of computation and how does it comes to that so we will just have to do method equals to post right so through this it is going to come to a post request right so it's on the login page right now so it, it is going to refer to the same login but not of type get but of type post so let's copy this paste this and do post right so here let's not do welcome here let's do uh, yeah lo not login but welcome and here we will return welcome but how are we going to return welcome we are only going to return welcome when the user hits the correct credentials and if it doesn't then we don't want the user to uh, like go to the welcome page that's the basic agenda here right so what we need here we need to first fetch two things one is user id another is password and after fetching that we have to confirm if the user is what we were expecting right so let's do request param so this is what we are getting through the form so request param we will do string user id and 
request param string password good so we need to match these also from login.jsp okay sounds good okay now we got the request now what we need to do is we just need to check if what we are expecting is coming from the view or not so if let's say user id dot equals admin and and password dot equals root right if that happens then we have to return welcome otherwise i want the user to stay in login page but we have to let him know that what went wrong like we have to let him know that uh, he provided invalid credential or wrong uh, password or wrong user id something like that's right so we will need model map here right let me import this and before returning we will do model dot put and what we will do is we will provide error message and here we will do please provide the correct user id and password but we also need to read this to our view i or to our uh, view so this is all about what we need to take care in our controller now just a sm small tweak that we have to do in, uh, do in login.jsp so in login.jsp here we are performing the action and i want uh, the user to know that he provided the wrong credentials so here I will do h2 right and will do uh, error message so this is what JSP stands for this is completely dynamic and this is how you get the value from a variable S getting sent from our view or controller you can say uh, sorry controller that is what you should say so from controller we are getting the data as model and this is how you get the data from the model so this is what we should uh, have and um, I have modified the JSP so I have to restart the application so let's do that run as Java application and um, it should work fine now so let's wait for it to kick start okay it has started so let's refresh this okay so let's provide wrong password first uh, so I will do admin and I will do admin so please provide the correct user id and password so it's being displayed let's uh, cancel this and try to provide the right password this time admin and root so welcome to the site so now what if i want to display the name also welcome and then the name you can say the user id right so what if I have to do this so to do this it's simple what we did here for login the same we have to do here so we here we will do model dot put and yeah user ID and here we will do user ID and that's it I may have to restart but let's try if it will work without restarting so let's do admin and root 
Oh, it's working without restarting. So welcome admin to the site. So it's not looking good enough right now, which I will try to beautify using Bootstrap, and that is the framework that I know very well. So I will um, I will use that framework in my next videos. And for this one, that is all. If you see any issue or any doubt in the code, if you don't understand any portion, like why we did that and we could have done in it in a uh, similar way we can there are more ways we can use rest controller in that case this and this entire um, param thing will get changed and it will also get smaller right but this is a basic understanding right so that's why we have to keep it very basic and that's what i tried to do so i hope you have got some some knowledge out of it and that's it for this video i will continue on this series and this is all for now have a good day guys and take care bye bye